And welcome to another Tales from the Dark Side. Shorts. Uh, this Tales from the Dark Side, we're actually going to cover something we've kind of been uh, hinting at in some of our other videos. If you watch some of our deep dives and stuff like that. Um, in the October solicitations, when they first came out, we saw this cover here. This is for Darth Vader 8. Um, and as soon as I saw it, I was like, Solo, man. They got to be kidding me, right? And uh, so I was like, what are you talking about? I was like, I think I know what that is on the front and I can't believe they're going to do it. So I ran over really quickly. I went and got this book. It's the art of uh, the rise of the Skywalker. These are big art books. They're like tabletop type books. They kind of go over like everything that they've done for it. All the like sketches, kind of like some of the moldings from behind and everything else. And I opened it up to a couple pages. And when I opened up to the pages, it clicked in my head. I was like, it is that character. And, um, the character that it is was called the Oracle originally when they were doing a lot of drawings, it was called the Oracle. And they, this is kind of one of the first kind of sketches. Um, the full sketch, they have like this alien being on it. And I remember the alien being too. Cause I remember the, uh, the duels of fate, the Colin Trevorrow script. There was a character named Torval in it. And he was this symbiotic dark side character. That's 7,000 years old. And he was like sucking the force slowly out of a creature. How it was explained. Uh, Kylo Ren was supposed to run into him and find a holocron. And the holocron was, oh, it was supposed to explode him in the face. But it, it was supposed to be Palpatine was leaving a message for Darth Vader when Palpatine died to explain what planet to go to. And this character here had tutored not only Plagueis, had also tutored Palpatine, and had also tutored uh, Darth Vader. Kylo Ren was going to run into him and he was going to kind of teach. He was kind of going to be like a mentor. I hate to say like a Yoda on Dagobah, but kind of like a Yoda on Dagobah, but not quite. He was going to be a Sith Lordish type character, but more like a, not the rule of two, the overall rule, like the overall kind of mentor, kind of like Batu or something like that. You know, the horse type character that you see in Rebels. Um, obviously, the Duels of Fate script got canceled. However, uh, you know, you start to see some of the script art where there was this alien figure coming out of a head. Then the alien figure here was being the symbiote on top of the baby head. They called it the Oracle. You also had a couple interviews here and there's a guy named uh, Neil Scanlon and Neil Scanlon is like the, um, he works over at like Lucas's like props and production, that type of thing. And they've asked him a couple times about this character. And he said flat out, like this character design was early on by Jake Loon David. Okay, so they call him Luke Davis. Luke Davis is his concept designer for uh, for Lucas and stuff like that. And he's playing around with the idea. Now, they're not going to say that was a Trevor idea, but it was the Trevor idea. And he took J.J. Abrams. J.J. Abrams was like, yeah, great. I don't know what I'm doing. Of course, I'd like to use something from over there. And he's like, this seems like a great thing. We got to put it in the movie. It got so far that they actually built this thing, right? Um, this thing... <laughs> This thing, when I say they built this thing, why I say that is because they actually used 28,000 pounds. Yes, 28K, 28,000 pounds in a single silicone pour so that there wasn't any witness lines to create this whole figure. There was eight to 10 puppeteers that actually used it. They did actually film this. It was like a 30 minute cut in there uh, on the in the uh, movie. Now, they didn't know what they were originally going to do to form it out. Like at some part, they're like, look, we can't. And this is kind of where the name gets changed and becomes weird. So they didn't actually know what they were going to do. First, it was going to be like, maybe he comes out of like this fiery part of Mustafar because a lot of it was supposed to be on fire. Then they went back to kind of like the swamp type area thing. And uh, this is kind of the final design. We know it's the final design because of two things. One, the actual book that I was showing you. And sorry, these aren't better. I have to figure out how to scan stuff. I actually took these pictures on the, on the computer and the iPad and put them back up. Neither here nor there. But... This was actually the final design, the final scene you kind of see in the movie and how we think why we're pretty sure that this is the scene from the movie is because this leaked. Um, and if you see, they kind of got the fire going on. They have the swamp there and the eye of the web ish bog is what the Oracle's name eventually turned into. And that's him right in front of Kylo Ren where this kind of placates in the movie. If you remember these characters right here, the Asmax of Wiss. So they were both this, they, they were the cultists. They had it both in the duels of fate where they were kind of protecting um, 
originally uh, the original character that Trevor came up with. They also had it in the actual movie. If you remember those guys that were running into Kylo Ren's lightsaber while he had it backwards or while he was fumbling around and mishitting hitting them and they just stabbed themselves. Those were those characters. When he beats those characters, he is supposed to be able to, he was supposed to be able to walk to uh, this scene right here and find the Oracle, AKA eye of the webbish bog, AKA the eye. And the eye was going to give him the wayfinder this time instead of the holocron, which originally was in duels of fate. They changed it to that little wayfinder thing so that, that he could find the emperor's clone after that. Um, obviously they had to cut that portion out of it. He did find the wayfinder, but now it's very interesting because two parts, one, obviously in eight, they're bringing it back. They do reference it to the eye. Um, in, in the, in the, uh, solicitation, it says, can Darth Vader deal with the eye? So, at one point, somebody had maybe it's Vader, maybe it's somebody else that has to give him the Sith Wayfinder. In the actual novelization, we know of of Rise of the, or of whatever the last one was. Is it Rise of Skywalker? Of Rise of Skywalker, there actually is a segment where it does go through and walks through Kylo Ren finding that Wayfinder and talking to the Oracle. So that's already kind of a canon part of it. We know that actually kind of happened, even though they didn't show it in the movie. But what the most intriguing part about this, besides him showing up in the comic, is that Neil Scallon also has said a couple times, and it's been taken different ways, but in the original interview, he had said, I expect to see this character. We have this character in storage. I expect to see this character again in some type of form, such as a TV show like the Mandalorian that's been taken out of context now. And a lot of people have said the TV show Mandalorian. I don't think it's showing up in the TV show Mandalorian, but he did definitely reference that they might use it in another cinematic appearance. Could be a movie. Obviously movies aren't doing so well this time, but he also did before it all happened reference. It could be in a TV show. Now, look, that was back in February. So, uh, you know, what the current situation was probably going on. So maybe he was just forecasting it would be a TV show and that's the way things were going to go. But it definitely sounds like they have some type of plan. They still have this enormous, you know, 28. Well, I mean, obviously it's not 28,000 pounds anymore. The poor was 28,000 pounds. The actual character being isn't 28,000 pounds, but it's still, a very, it's still a pretty pricey thing. He also said that it was very easy uh, for the puppets to do it like this type of character would have been very hard. And after they tried to use it once, they probably would have had to have it in the movie or thrown it away. He said that because of the design and how they made it, that it was very simple for the puppeteers to use and he could definitely see him using it again. Um, that's why listen, uh, call up your LCSs. If you aren't reading Vader, which you should be reading Vader anyways, like, yeah, I know they've got a character that we kind of know the outcome to already and not a lot of actual fans are high on that character, but it's still a pretty good storyline to this point. Um, you know, we just saw him come out on last thing. What's going to happen with that character? We don't know either, but we also had the robot there. It's been a really good storyline so far. The handmaidens, everything like that. I suggest you pick it up, but make sure with this one, because the B cover is uh, Lando Christian in the um, Millennium Falcon taking off. Make sure you quest the A cover of your LCSs because the B cover just doesn't do it. And I think this character, I mean, I, I just think it's cool. You know, it's going to have that double link. It, it links back to Tor, you know, which means duels of fate. Those people are just going to love it because all, you know, I'm actually in that camp of thought that duels of fate should have been the last movie. People that actually do kind of the, the few people that do like the last, this last movie, are going to like it because it was the cut scene that they never put on the Blu-ray or anything else, but people do know about it. And then, you know, people always love dark side Sith characters and this character can explain. I mean, we don't know what they're going to do with it, but it could be a new form of using the force through the dark side. Kind of like when those Sith characters showed up on the planet, it could kind of explain that there is more than just the rule of two, which opens a whole gambit of possibilities. If they do base it more off of the Tor character too, remember that means that this character could be 7,000 years old by the time of Rise of Skywalker. Think about how long that is. That's all the way back to the Old Republic. Either way, it's a good read. Uh, make sure you're picking this one up. 
uh, that's pretty much all I got about that. Hey, Solo Wookie. Yes, sir. Uh, could you give them a little shout out to our sponsors? I can. Please, everybody, remember to check out our friends down at Bird City Comics. And for 15% off, use code DARKSIDE, D-A-R-K-S-H-D-E. And always remember, you can catch Anthony and Laura and the other guys Friday nights on the Top 10 and catch Laura on the Comic Book Woman show on Tuesday nights right here on the your favorite channel, Tales from the Flip Side. Oh, that's the breaking news sound alert. Uh, hey, Solo Wookie, I think we have some breaking news. New uh, update. <laughs> in the meantime, luckily we're a little bit behind on editing. Uh, this didn't get out in since we had shot it, uh, something had happened. A little bit of a little update that I think we wanted to give you. Vader 7 came out. We are going to give you spoilers on Vader 7, obviously. Um, the last page of Vader 7 uh, looks like to give us a little preview of this character. Um, that's the Oracle slash, you know, Eye of the Webbish Bog. In this, in 7, there's parts where, you know, we kind of were hoping that he would be this massive uh, Darth dark side character type thing not a darth but just dark side character with a lot of dark force like stuff in it maybe even a mentor we because we do know that there he's in the novelization all it seems like he does because he reaches out to vader. i'm not gonna give away all of seven but he does reach out to vader a couple times vader isn't using the force but this character through the force is teasing him which is kind of cool or goading maybe read it for yourself hopefully you're picking up this series like we said earlier when we shot this, it's a great series. There's a lot of stuff going on in Vader that's good. Looks like eight is still going to be a sweet book. Make sure you call up your LCS. Once again, this is the cover for eight. The character is going to be in there again. Going to explain probably some things. Maybe it won't go so far back as we think it is, but it definitely, we know, goes all the way forward to uh, Rise of the Skywalker, and there has to be something about its past. Uh, this is going to give us the story. It's going to give us its, its appearance and everything like that. I'm still extremely excited about this book. Remember, a copy only. Oh, you can get the B copy if you want, but the B copy, eh, not as cool as it looks. LCS is usually have a problem ordering. They're going to be all over the place with ordering, so make sure you call them early. Make sure you get the A copy in there. Uh, tell us what you think of this character, man. Like, if you know anything about this character, if you know about the Oracle, if you heard about it, if you've seen other screenshots, let us know down below in the comments. Let us know if you guys like dark side characters, man. I think having a dark side mentor character that could look this guy right here. He obviously has a extreme control over the dark side force. If he's reaching it out to Vader. Um, I don't know, man, that there's so many, I, we got to keep this short. We're already over time. I, I, I just think it opens up so many possibilities for this universe. So many things they can do. Maybe we'll do another video after this book comes out, depending if they tell us what the true power of this character is. Guys, go out and get it. Once again, it's Darth Vader 8. Great read so far, the whole series. I hope you enjoy this one. Solo Wookie, take us out. All righty, that sounds great. Please, everybody, go over and force push that like and subscribe button. Walk over and saber smash that alarm bell so that the, you can be alarmed when the greatest voices and faces this side of the galaxy come over to drop some more knowledge on you. And may the force be with you. Always. Always.